Hey guys, t bull here. Today we're going to be taking a kind of a quick look at the ship modifications, go over what exactly they do for you, and maybe my personal recommendations as to how I personally like to use them. But keep in mind, the modifications are kind of ship dependent, and they are dependent on your personal preferences and your personal play style. So I would recommend taking the ship out for a couple games and then comparing that ship's stats to the other uh, ships with the same class and tier. So for instance, if I'm looking at this Farragut, I would compare it to the other tier four destroyers just to see what the strengths and weaknesses of that particular ship are. So first we're gonna look at the, this is the kind of the base. Um, this is usually at tier three when you start seeing your first mods, this is usually the choice you have. You have main battery modification two, which cuts down on the main battery traverse speed and slightly increases the reload time. Um, this one I feel is, if you're going to use it, it's probably most uh, beneficial on battleships just because they tend to have the real slow traverse speed, which is the speed that the turrets are turning side to side. Um, personally, I don't tend to use this one just because I try and plan ahead. Um, to have the shot ready to go by the time it's reloaded so yeah I'm gonna probably have one or two instances where my turrets are gonna swing from let's say they're pointing out the right side of the ship maybe I'll have to turn them around to the left side at one point in the game if I have to do it twice I'm starting to think man that's kind of a mistake I think if you're doing it more than two times in a match unless there's extenuating circumstances you probably need to focus on keeping your guns on the same side of the ship a little bit more would be my recommendation. Um, maybe some people disagree with me. Um, but for me, I rarely use main battery mod 2, to be honest with you. I almost always use aiming systems mod 1, uh, and primarily because of the cuts down of the dispersion of the main battery. For me, I really trust my ability to aim. So based on the fact that I believe I can aim well, the next step in the chain is I want those shots to get as close to where I'm aiming them to go. And so anything that can cut down on the dispersion of the main battery, I'm usually gonna pursue that. Again, it's gonna be ship dependent, but that's the main draw for aiming systems mod one for me. Uh, for destroyers and to a lesser extent cruisers, the, the increases speed of the torpedo tubes rotation is nice and for battleships and to maybe a lesser extent cruisers the secondary increase is nice too so this thing has something for all the ships but again the main draw is cutting down on the dispersion of the main battery and this one it's viable and again i do want you to i want you to experiment with all these and adapt them to your personal play style i want to emphasize that emphasize that um strongly to you just this is my personal preference but i generally don't use this one all right so for the u.s navy options tiers three and four you're always going to have uh, the option that we just looked at the main battery mod two and the uh, aiming systems mod one that's going to be the choice for all three classes for japanese cruisers and british and japanese battleships you do have an additional option, secondary battery modification too. Now, this is more viable, I think, for battleships where you're gonna be playing close in more often, although cruisers will find themselves in close quarters combat occasionally as well. And a lot of new players do underestimate how effective the secondary battery can be at close ranges. Um, so pay attention when you're playing to see how much damage those are putting out I'm not discounting this option, and again, I think it's something to consider, especially, I'd probably lean towards using it more on battleships, but again, for me personally, I'm just always gonna be using aiming systems mod one. I can't think of another sh a ship that I'm not using this on that allows it, um, but I'd say I'd probably use it 19 out of 20 times. Again, that's personal preference, so. Um, probably try this one out. I'd probably try it on like a battleship just to see how it works. 
and then consider it for sure. I mean, you should be considering all these, but for me, aiming systems mod is just gonna win out time and time again. All right, so on tier five, you start to get a second um, mod slot available. I believe this is always the options that you choose from. There may be an odd ship here or there, but I can't think of any. I'm pretty sure this is always the second mod slot that's available, at least on non-premium ships. So this one has some interesting options. You have the damage control systems mod 2, which decreases fire duration and flood duration. Steering mod 2, which uh, cuts down on the rudder shift time. And the propulsion, which kind of reduces the time to reach full power while accelerating. Um, for me, personally, I'm Battleships, I'm going to usually use this one just because they're going to be taking a lot of fire. They're going to be more subject to being set on fire and hit, you know, flooding out than other ships. For instance, if your destroyer gets hit with a torpedo, you're not going to really be worrying about flooding because you're going to be dead, you know. <laughs> Cruisers, I mean, it's same thing. You just have less hit points to work with anyway, so... If you're getting set on fire a bunch or you get hit with a flood, you're probably already in deep trouble. Battleship, however, usually, you know, if you get one fire on your deck, it's usually not in your best interest to put one fire out. Um, and But there's going to be a lot of situations where, you know, let's say you put out a couple of fires, well, then they're going to try and set you on fire again or hit you with a torpedo once you've used your damage control party. So for me... I very often use this on battleships. Uh, the steering gear is mod two. This one I will often put on um, destroyer class um, ships. Again, I don't feel like damage control system is really worth taking in uh, cruisers or destroyers. So for me, the choice is kind of between these two. Now, destroyers can usually uh, hit full power while accelerating pretty quickly anyways. And again, take a look at your individual ship. But for me, I'd, I like to use this more for cruisers when I'm going to be kind of backing up and going, for, going forth and back, you know, and kind of throwing off the enemy's aim that way. So I usually put this one on cruisers. I usually put this one on destroyers. Um, the rudder shift time just makes you kind of more agile. Now this one is tempting to put on battleships just because of the rudder ship just so slow. And I'm not trying to discourage you from doing that. It's definitely a viable option. And all, all these are. All, all these mods are viable on every ship. That's the takeaway I want you to have is just because I prefer it on a given class ship doesn't mean that that has to work for you. I mean this is a great mod on a battleship. You know this is a fine mod on a battleship. I just happen to think this one's personally the most valuable. Um, so I typically go battleship, destroyer, cruiser. All right, at tier six you get the third mod slot. This is usually what it's going to look like. Uh, battleships, they're just going to have this target acquisition systems mod. These are for the lines that are available, at least that if the future lines of ships, they might have different mods packages that we're not talking about. So if you're watching this video in the future, just keep in mind, this is when uh, the Japanese, United States, and British navies were just introduced. Um, so getting back to this, this is a this is your option on the battleship. So we'll start off talking about that one. It's the spotting range and torpedo visibility range. That's pretty obvious. The RGA, a lot of people don't know what that means. I don't actually know what it stands for. I think I did at one point, but that's the. I think it's the range of guaranteed acquisition. If I had to guess the acronym. But that's what it is. It's for it's your auto detect range, so that your base is two kilometers. If you increase it by fifty percent, then you bump it up to three kilometers. So that's interesting to play around with. That's helpful if there's someone on the other side of an island, or if you're trying to push someone who's in a smoke cloud, you can actually outspot them if you have this and they don't have something similar than that. So that's interesting. Um, but for cruisers and destroyers, this is typically what your tier 6 option is going to look like. Um, 
Me personally, I usually put this on the cruisers just because I like the increased torpedo visibility range. A lot of times people aren't going to shoot torpedoes at destroyers, so I think that's kind of a waste. A lot of people are going to shoot torpedoes at cruisers for sure. And one of your main jobs as a cruiser is to counter destroyers, so obviously they're going to try and prevent you from doing that. And the increased spotting range, you know, that's nice. But all these are all these are very viable, you know, again, and um, I would encourage you to at least think about it and look at your particular ship. Um, the, the decrease on the detectability range and the incoming fire dispersion, I usually will put this one on the destroyers. Um, we'll compare that to this, which I think is the other viable option for destroyers. The rudder shift time and the steering gear repair time, well, a lot of people are going to look at the steering gear repair time and say, your steering gear is constantly getting shot out as a destroyer, so this is going to help, and it is. But my thinking personally is, if you've burned your damage control party to fix your steering gear and you're getting shot again immediately and it's busted, you know, you're, how much HP do you really have left at that point? Over a course of 100 games, let's say, you know, this is going to help you, what, two or three situations out of 100 games? That would be my guess. I don't know. You might, um, you certainly could disagree with me on, my, on that, but that's just how I approach this. So for me personally, I'll put this on destroyers just because of the extra, you know, the, inc the increase of the incoming fire dispersion that just makes you harder to hit, which obviously is very helpful if you have extremely small hit point pool and the decrease in detectability range that increases your stealth. Well, those are both, core core uh, things for destroyers to desire. So for me, I'm always going to put that on destroyers. Usually going to put this on cruisers. Again, it's going to come down to the ship in particular. This one I really don't use very often, to be honest with you. Okay, so for tier 7 uh, destroyers and cruisers, you're typically going to have a combo of these. This is for the United States cruisers and destroyers. You're going to have these three options. Japanese destroyer, these three options. The cruiser adds in the secondary battery mod. Um, that one, you can take a look at it. increases the reload time of the secondary battery mod. I typically am not going to be relying on the secondary batteries on cruisers very often. At least not currently how I play the game. So I'm not going to use that one. Um... For cruisers, I'm typically going to put this one on. It's going to cut down on the reload time. It does slow down your turret traverse. So again, I think as you gain experience, hopefully you're able to overcome that and have your shots positioned ahead of time. So that isn't an issue. But it, it can become an issue if you get in close quarter combat or combat with multiple targets. Just keep that in mind. But I'm trying to, when I'm thinking about these for me, I'm trying to set up my ship so it's going to benefit it in the highest percentage of all instances that it's going to encounter. So for me, a cruiser, I'm rather, I want to put out more damage as quickly as possible. And I can do that in all situations versus how many situations is a slower traverse going to hurt me? Not all situations, it's less than that. So for me, I really like this option. Torpedo tubes mod. Uh, it cuts down on the reload. It does up the risk of it being incapacitated. For me, I'd particularly look this look at this one as a uh, Japanese destroyer, which is going to be playing the stealth game. Cutting down that reload time, it's going to be really nice, and the threat of it being incapacitated. Hopefully, you're not getting shot at a whole lot playing the Japanese destroyers. So that one, I'd probably put on that one almost for sure. Um, this one, increasing your main battery range, it's not bad, but again, to me, I'm looking at what percentage does that affect my play. You might might be one or two shots per game. It could be more. I mean, it could allow you to play a little further out, which could help. So this is something that you could put this on and then adapt your style of play to accommodate that. You know, so that I don't want to rule these mods out for you just by saying this is how I personally like to how I like to run my ships. I want you to kind of think about the strengths and weaknesses of all of them. Look at the individual ship, look at your own personal play style, and then say, how can this particular one affect what I can do in the particular ship? 
So this one, if you put it on, would allow you to play a, a, lo a further away game, which could be beneficial, you know. But for me personally, I just like cutting down on the reload time, and I'm not that worried about the reduction in traverse speed. And again, like I said, for cruisers, we're just talking about the cruiser. This is available on battleships too, by the way. We'll look at a battleship loadout here in a sec, but that one's more viable. But for me, I'm generally going to go cruisers here. And for sure, Japanese destroyer here. And then I would probably look at these two for the other nations' destroyers. And then looking at a tier 7 variety of a battleship uh, package. This one's specific to the Americans, as far as I can tell, at least at this point in time. Uh, the Japanese and British do not have this option. Uh, this one for me, the artillery plotting room, is a no-brainer. Cutting down the dispersion by 11%. That's it's an automatic for me, again. Uh, this one and these two, these were available in the last slide that we were looking at. So, I, again, the secondary battery mod 3, I think, is more vi uh, viable for battleships. And do take a close look at it. And, again, the Japanese and UK varieties don't have this. So, you're really you're looking at this. So, I, I would weigh it, in my mind, like, again, play a few games. You know, these once you get to these tier 7 mods unless for some reason you have piles of silver it's going to take a while once you unlock the ship to install these mods because you're talking 10 15 million silver whatever it is so you should have plenty of games under your belt before you're getting to the point where you need to make some of these decisions so at this point in time think to yourself am i finding myself in a lot of close combat situations with this well then this is a Cutting down on the reload, again, don't underestimate the secondary battery. If you're close range, it does help quite a bit. Uh, so that's definitely a strong option. This one, I probably lean towards cutting down the reload time at the main battery. But again, you need to take a look at the ship, how you're performing in it. Are you running into a lot of situations where the guns are not catching up? Your guns are loaded, but you're not they're not uh, aimed at where you want them to be. Well, if that's how you're playing the ship and it's already a problem without putting this mod on, then by putting this on, you're gonna accentuate that problem even further. So I'd probably steer away from putting that on if you're finding yourself in a lot of situations where your guns are playing catch up to what you want them to be doing. So if that's not the situation, I'd probably lean towards this one. And again, if you're close quarters brawling a lot, probably go with this one. Uh, for me, if this, artillery plotting room is available on any ship that you ever see it I'd probably put it on automatically but that's just me so I think that covers all the mods that are currently in the game and I hope it was helpful but my I wanted to go over it a because I'm getting a lot of questions about it so I thought I'd try my best at explaining it and just kind of giving you a little bit of background on what the thinking is that I'm employing for my own ships but again the two main takeaways personal preference and ship specific you know the underline those two things all right so just play with the ship see what its strengths are see what its weaknesses are and look at the stats just take five minutes to look at the stats and compare them and then see what you want to do with it and then be look at your personal play style again going back to the battleships are you always are your guns always dragging behind where you want them to be well then put on mods that are going to increase the traverse speed not decrease them and so on and so forth you know or if you're heavy into torpedo play in your cruisers maybe look at the mods that affect the torpedoes whereas if you don't ever use them then why why try and affect them you know so i hope that was helpful I definitely want to hear from you guys on this topic, on your thoughts on this, because you can definitely change my mind too. But I want you to, I want, I want it to be kind of a discussion, if possible, where everyone's kind of throwing ideas. So then, I can look at the comments. Everyone else can look at the comments and say, "Oh, that's a cool idea." I didn't really think of it that way, because this, this is one of those areas of the game where, like, creative thinking may actually produce some unexpected results. So. Be sure to leave the comments on how you like to run your ships, 
if you have questions i'll try and get to them and answer them as quick as i can um, i love hearing from you guys in the comments but hit the thumbs up if you like the video uh, if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing we got a lot of world of warships content coming out all the time so that'll help you keep up with that and we'll see you guys all later all right peace